In 2014, Airbus introduced the world to a sort of brand new widebody jet. It was their A330neo, a revamped version of the company's legacy A330. It sported new engines, new winglets, and not much else. Yet, Airbus had positioned this jet to compete with Boeing's all-new 787, which debuted three years earlier. However, being built on an airframe from the 90s, the A330neo has no real shot of matching the 787's efficiency. So why did Airbus decide to build it? Let me explain. The story of the A330neo actually begins with its bigger brother, the A350. Back when Boeing decided to launch their mid-sized, ultra-long-range 787 in 2004, Airbus was pressured by airlines to respond with a jet of their own. What they brought to potential customers was sort of a Frankenstein's monster. Airbus took the A330's fuselage and gave it new wings and engines. This first pass at creating the A350, which really just looked more like a revamped A330 than an all-new jet, was heavily criticized by two of the largest aircraft lessers on Earth, GCAS and ILFC. At risk of losing their business, Airbus scrapped this first design and launched a larger carbon composite jet meant to compete with the Boeing 777. This shift towards building a larger jet left the 787 completely unchallenged. And this was a big problem for Airbus. Even in the face of production delays, the 787 was selling like crazy. By the time 2014 rolled around, the 787 had accumulated a backlog of almost 1,000 aircraft. This meant that if you wanted to place a 787 order in 2014, you'd have to wait about six years before receiving your new planes. And while Airbus was certainly not happy with Boeing selling so many 787s, it did present the company with a new sales opportunity. While fleet modernization programs are usually planned years in advance, not all airlines can afford to wait upwards of six years before receiving new jets. Airlines were now incentivized to purchase a less efficient re-engine A330 in a way that they weren't back when Airbus scrapped the A350's original design. Let's also remember that because of their initial design approach for the A350, Airbus had, for all intents and purposes, already sunk two years into the A330neo's development. This ultimately reduced the development time of this new jet, and combine this with the fact that the Neo uses many of the same components and the same supply network as legacy A330s, the cost of the Neo program amounted to just $2 billion. Comparatively, the 787 program cost $32 billion to develop. Herein lies the primary reason Airbus decided to build the A330neo. While it could never match the 787 on efficiency, it could beat it on cost. Now, if we look at the list price of the 787-9 and the A330-900neo, they cost almost exactly the same. But in the world of commercial aviation, no customer pays list price. Since the A330neo's program costs were so low, Airbus is able to offer deeper discounts than Boeing can and still turn a profit. And for many airlines, if they can pay a lower upfront cost for the jet, it is more than enough to justify the long-term losses in efficiency. Now, as of this video's publishing, Boeing has sold almost 1,500 787s. However, if we just look at 2014 onwards, the year Airbus launched the A330neo, Boeing has sold just 393 787s. Comparatively, Airbus has sold 248 A330neos. And while this still lags the 787 over the same time period, there's no doubt that its existence has helped to stem the Dreamliner's spectacular growth. And considering the program has cost so little to get off the ground, this is an absolute win. If you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.